Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be sharing with you different processes I do to set up an application to build a backend project. And I really wanted to do this video today because when I was learning how to code and, and I mean, even today I have moments where I'm like, okay, where, where do I start? How do I start from the beginning? And I wanted to break down for you what I wish I had, which was basically a guide to setting up your project when you are starting a new project that you want to build out, when you want to code, and different tools I use to make that process manageable because it can be a lot otherwise. And the worst thing you can do is just start, open up you know, your ID or your whatever code editor you're using and just start coding. I've done that and the amount of time and rework you will have to do afterwards is if you don't plan properly and use the right tools is just, you're just gonna have to throw out the application, I think. Hi, Mr. Marks. Yeah. Lay down. Before we get into it though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related content. Leave down in the comments other videos you want me to make, other questions you have. And I also want to say a huge shout out to Setapp for sponsoring this video. Okay, this is Tiffany coming to you from the future. I realized when going through this video, I didn't speak to you really about where I was finding all these tools. And I wanted to share that with you as it's a huge part of making your life easier to look for these tools. All of these tools are part of Setapp for Backend. It's a special version of the big Setapp, which is well known for Mac productivity. This one is more focused on the apps that are especially useful for developers, just like me. Many of the apps that I use and other useful tools are usually paid flagship apps. So they are on their own, you have to pay for the subscription. And that's why Setapp is so useful and why I subscribe to it is because you get this whole suite of apps for only $7.99 a month for a subscription, which is beyond a fair deal for everything you get access to. And of course, if you are someone who is looking to play around with these apps, they do have a seven day free trial so you can play around with some of the apps. I link set up down below, so make sure to go download them today for your seven day free trial and start playing around with some of these tools. Setup has some amazing productivity and workflow tools. The ones I'm going to be sharing with you today are all related to more of the backend development process and I'm really excited to take you along with me. Okay, let's get started. The most important thing, the number one thing I can give you, the best piece of advice I have gotten and I think I'm someone who doesn't listen to advice. I have to learn the hard way first. So please don't be one of those people. Do not be like me. Um, is to set up a diagram and really architect or spec out your project before you dive into it. And I kind of alluded to this at the beginning of the video, the importance of doing that. And why it is so important is because you might think you are building a smaller project or smaller application, but when you start specking out all the requirements, it becomes big very quickly. And by specking out your project, it's a really great way to visualize the code, uh, document the APIs, what data do the APIs need to contain, what kind of API are they? Are they getting information? Are they sending, deleting, posting, you know, all of the above? Uh, what are they getting? What are they doing? And when you start really thinking about this, about what APIs you need to build for your application, what queries you need to make to the database, it quickly becomes real as far as just how big this application you are going to make is usually. And by having it on paper and specking it out, it's a really great way to feel more prepared going into the project and be more prepared going into the project. And almost 90, I would say, I don't know what the percentage is, but have a very better chance of actually succeeding and building out the project. The next thing that you need to take into consideration is databases. What database are you going to use? Are you going to use a SQL, no SQL? What's, what is the flow going to be for the databases? One tool I've used, I actually learned in my coding bootcamp was Table Plus. And this is essentially a modern tool to manage multiple databases. So you could work with MySQL, Postgres, uh, and MongoDB, and so much more. And I really like this application because it has a very user-friendly UI. So if you are just starting out in backend, or you know maybe you've been doing it for a long time, you just want a friendly UI, that's doesn't come, I think that's always a great thing to have. Uh, Table Plus is a really great application, something that I rely on heavily for my own personal projects. Okay, so we have, we've specced out our application. We have our database uh, that we are going to use. What comes next? Well, of course you need an IDE. And this really depends on what language you are using. Uh, so this can really vary. I'm just biased because I use JavaScript a lot. So 
I'm always in Visual Studio Code. Of course, you can use other languages in there too, but uh, that's really the IDE that I learned on and I'm most comfortable in. I also feel like it has a lot of great plugins too, which is always nice and but once again, that really depends on what application or what programming language you're using. When I was coding in PHP with Symfony, what did it, oh my gosh, what was, what is the IDE you use for, for that? That's, it was PHP IDE. I'm Googling here. PHP Storm, that is what I use. And yeah, it was an interesting experience as well, but I definitely prefer Visual Studio Code. Okay, so once we have those three things set up, the next important thing that is often forgot about until closer to the end of the project is setting up your Git, setting up a GitHub, setting up an account where you can store all the code and make commits for your project. I often would build a project and then just do one massive commit to GitHub. And it's a really terrible way of going about things, even if you are the only one developing, because then you don't really have a history. And oftentimes, especially when I was learning how to code, I would start doing really well on a project, building out this really cool project, and make a change to it that broke the application. And I could not figure out what it was. Whereas if I would have just done little pushes uh, on a consistent basis, I wouldn't have had this issue. I could just go back to a commit earlier and everything would be fine. So I highly, highly suggest setting up an account on GitHub right away from day one of the project and going about it that way. And one thing I did when I first started to code, and I still do today, but I mostly just use the terminal, is to have a Git client. So to use something to really help you with the commands and it has a nice and friendly UI. So for this one, I'm going to share with you about Gitfox. So you can easily resolve and merge conflicts and commit faster, which is really nice. Rely on full text search, query highlights to find anything. And it has an easy workflow with inline changes, uh, different images and line staging. So if you're looking for kind of a way to get into Git and get more comfortable with the commands and you're just starting out, I think Gitfox is a really great way to go. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some popular backend programming languages. And I am going to say one of the most popular ones still and is used in so many websites, of course, is PHP. And PHP either has a love or hate relationship with people. I went into learning PHP for my first job and I was really scared to do so solely because out of fear from hearing others speak about it so negatively. I just feel like everyone talks so negative about PHP. But when I got into it and I got more comfortable with it, it's actually a really, it's a, it's a good language. Like I don't mind it at all. Would I want to go back to programming in it? Probably not, but I think it's great. It's a, you know, once you get up, it's a language, language that is so in demand and it's not going anywhere anytime soon because of it has built so many parts of the web. Another language for backend, which I think is great, is JavaScript. Uh, I really like this to use for backend as well because if you are someone who wants to eventually become a full stack developer, uh, being able to use JavaScript for both the front and backend side of things is a huge advantage. And then of course there are so many others such as Python, Java, Ruby, C Sharp, and I mean the list goes on, but you get the point. Okay, so once we start building our application, one thing we will need to do is test the application, test the code. And for that, PAW is a really great tool to use. So PAW essentially is an HTTP client, an API description tool that's all in one app. It allows you to choose from tons of extensions or add your own ones. And it also, I find, really helps you avoid making mistakes by having different highlights for syntax and uh, warning signs. So you're not just really wondering what is going on. They're very user friendly and give you kind of hints and suggestions. Okay, that is my process for setting up to build a backend application and ensuring that I'm using the right tools. And I thought this would be a very valuable video for you because there are so many different tools. I mean, we just went through a few tools and it can kind of be overwhelming at first and then in turn you don't use the tools, but if you don't use the tools, it's gonna be, what, your life is gonna be much more difficult. So I wanted to share it with you in a very friendly and easy way to break it down. And I linked Setup down below who houses all of these applications. So make sure to click on them and go check them out. Thank you all, I will see you soon.